Hello everyone and welcome to The Bass Vault, our channel for all things bass. Now today I'm very excited because over the weekend I received something very unique, something very special, extraordinary and in my humble opinion a game changer. Here I have my 2015 Ken Smith Fusion Elite and as you all know Smiths are perfect bassists. They've been used throughout the years by many session players like Anthony Jackson, Melvin Lee Davis, like Hadrian Ferrod, Brady Freddy Washington, the list goes on and on and on. So you'd ask, how can you improve on perfection? Enter the Ray Ross Saddleless Bridge. But how can a bridge improve the sound? Indeed, all different bridges have their subtle sound signatures, but where the Ray Ross wins over all of them is the unique design. You see, the Ray Ross Bridge doesn't have saddles. What that means is that your strings get an uninterrupted run all the way from the barrel, which slots right here at the back of the pin, all the way up to the nut. And what that leads to is a lot of different improvements. You get better harmonics, you get more clarity, you get better sustain, punch, better dynamics and a lot more natural volume. I hope I'm not missing something because the benefits of this design are just so many. The Ray Ross Bridge is currently being studied at St Andrews College in Scotland and while not complete yet the findings of Jonathan Kemp PhD of Acoustic Science show that with the standard bridge the modes of vibration travel up the string all the way to the saddle and once they hit it they sort of scramble resulting in something like a bird's nest. Now with Ray Ross, the same modes have a very clear separation, where once you had a bird's nest, now there are very clear separate vertical, horizontal and diagonal lines. This shows that the resonances are working independently and clearly, which leads to all those benefits that we talked about earlier. But let's put science aside for a moment and let the bridge speak, or shall I say sing for itself, and then I'll tell you a few more things about it. Don't ya Sell yourself so cheap Making up for nothing Suffering through ya I don't need to Say a thousand times Well you know it So take a long look And you'll find you are just getting started And it's all about you As you can see the difference is very audible and as Ray the inventor of the bridge says once you've played a Ray Ross you realize that everything else sounds like you've put mittens on your strings or as I would say it's like you put a blanket over your speakers. Needless to say that I'm going to be replacing the bridges on all my bases because now that I've played Ray Ross I don't want to play anything else. Two more things worth mentioning. Brubaker guitars offer Ray Ross as an option to their builds and uh, if you don't know about them, this is the company that Ken Smith outsourced their bass production to last year. And if Ken trusts them, I would trust them too. Also, the Japanese company Bacchus, they have a great video, and I'll put the link in the description, uh, in which they've done a comparison between a standard bridge and a Ray Ross bridge. But also what they've done is they've measured the response and they've put graphics so you can actually visually see the difference in the sustain 
in the frequency spectrum and the volume. So I hope I've managed to convince you. To me, as I said, it's a game changer and I'm sold on Ray Ross. Now a little bit about the technical side of things. Ray Ross comes in different finishes, gold as this one, black and chrome, and either 17 or 19 millimeters of string spacing. When I put it on my Ken Smith, and luckily the screw holes were matching, so I didn't have to drill anything, but I was a little bit worried because uh, the Ken Smith, the stock string spacing is 18 millimeters. But when I put it on, as you can see, the strings fit perfectly within the boundaries of the neck with a couple of millimeters to spare. So no issue there. Now the Ray Ross comes with an adjustment tool and screws. And the way you adjust the bridge is this. Around here, you have these little holes. So you slot the tool in and you turn clockwise or counterclockwise and that will change your string action. Likewise, but with the other end of the tool, which is a bit thicker, you slot it in here and you turn clockwise or counterclockwise and that will adjust your intonation. It's as simple as that. And this brings today's video to an end. I hope you liked it and I hope I managed to convince you to give the Rayros Bridge a try. It's worth it. Please feel free to check out our other videos, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey, don't you? Sell yourself so cheap Making up for